let's get this thing started. Like I said, super flex tight end premium 1.5, uh, 23, 24 remock draft here. So I'm going to take the first pick. I'm going to take CJ Stroud. Uh, Austin, who you got at the second spot here? Yep. Second, I'm going to take Anthony Richardson. Homer. <laughs> Uh, one three. I'm gonna take Caleb Williams, and I'm back up on the clock at one four. I'm taking Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm, all right. Uh, one five. I'm gonna go mm. Bajan Robinson. Oh, if you're not gonna pronounce his name right, <laughs> I can't listen to this show. One oh six. I'm gonna take Jimmy or Gibbs here. All right. All right. So so no Puka, no neighbors, no Rome, no other quarterbacks off the uh, off, off the board. Oh, I think he's a rip. All right, so I took Stroud. Let's let's we're gonna go six at a time, and then we'll kind of review w- where we're at here. Stroud, I took Stroud. Just it, it's safe. You're not screwing it up. Maybe not the ceiling of what Anthony Richardson has, but you know, not the has a whole season as a body of work. Left a game and then missed a game or two, I believe, early, which might have knocked the average points per game down a little bit. He was slaying. Come on, on. CJ Stroud. But I'm saying like I think when you look at his overall points per game it, it was at like 18 and a half or something when, for the season. What, so what I'm saying is I think he exited a game early. I don't and could have been well it matters because it, guys like Anthony Richardson floor is potentially in like that you know Lamar <clears throat> Jalen Hurts floor where you get the 23 points per game and that's what you know, the mark of that kind of elite next level quarterback because of the rushing upside, but safe, reliable and room to grow. So I think I think you can get to, you know, for sure, 20, 20 to 22 points per game Stroud in the next few years. Hopefully it wasn't a Fugazi and it wasn't beginner's luck here. Uh, But I don't you usually don't see that good of a of a performance from a guy who's going to really regress, especially after adding a bunch there. So I went Stroud safe, but Richardson certainly was on my mind. So it looks, uh, it looked easy out there for Stroud. Like yeah. it looked effortless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Too high in the ADP for me, but uh, I'll take him. I'll take him high here. Uh, Austin, what do you got here at one, two? Yeah. Anthony Richardson. So I'm going to do the exact opposite as you Casey. You said you're going to play it safe. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to have fun. I want to, I want to get a little risky. I am taking Anthony Richardson and, I know, obviously, really small sample size from last season. Got banged up multiple times, missed the majority of the season. I get it. And I'm going to cherry pick here because that's, you know, we only have a really small body of work from Anthony Richardson. So that's all that we can work with. Sure. But Anthony Richardson was first in the NFL last season, not just amongst quarterbacks, but the, any position. He ranked first in points per snap. OK, that in itself is a metric that I think is actually pretty reliable. I think it's uh, pretty predictive. And I say that because the leader for the running back position was Devon H and the leader for the wide receiver position was Tyree kill. And again, the leader for the quarterback position was Richardson. Number two for QBs was Josh Allen. Mm. And Josh Allen was sitting at 0.365 fantasy points per snap. A rich was at 0.425. So, Pretty big gap ahead, but obviously significantly s- smaller, you know, body of work. Sure. So I just I found that little nugget. Uh, I thought that was interesting. And um, yeah. yeah, man, let's uh, let's have fun with it. I think Anthony Richardson, there's a world that exists where he could be the QB one overall in fantasy. Yeah, I mean, it was it was quite impressive how quickly he could amass fantasy points last year. And uh, there's certainly a, a little bit of risk because you haven't seen it. And, you know, I think raw was the wrong word to be using for Anthony Richardson. We just haven't we just haven't seen him, um, you know, put all the tools to use. Uh, and I, and I, I really what makes me comfortable with Richardson is the system and the and the head coach uh, to develop. And, and that's really what a lot of this comes down to. Uh, so it doesn't scare me as much as maybe some other people are with Richardson. But I, I like I like the pick there. So at one three, I went Caleb Williams. I think this was a pretty chalk one, two, three for the most part. Some people may say they don't want Caleb Williams. I think that's silly. I feel very comfortable taking Caleb here. I, he just. He Look at all those green metrics. Right. And, I, you know, that part doesn't matter. Just the stuff on the <laughs> field is is really impressive from him year over year. Just watching him play the position. He just he's got something special. Now, whether the Bears, who have had a terrible track record of developing quarterbacks, can finally get one right. It's almost as if they would should be due here. 
Uh, but a lot of the times we proposition for the rookie quarterback, it, we know that it's 50-50 for the most part. Uh, that's what all the percentages, that's how the first round picks, quarterbacks kind of all come out in the wash. Caleb, there hasn't been very many quarterbacks, if any, that have ever gone to a situation like Caleb Williams has is entering into here with, you know, a pretty good offensive line, a good defense behind him. And then, of course, you have Keenan Allen, you have DJ Moore, and you have Roma Dunze on top of Cole Komet, uh, who was very productive last year. They brought in DeAndre Swift. They have Khalil Herbert still and Roshan Johnson. So they have a plethora of weapons, and they brought in uh, Gerald Everett. So, like, at every position... You've got really reliable, solid depth to, to, to extremely good depth at, at the wide receiver position. Uh, so I, I just I feel like Caleb Williams has everything around him uh, kind of to to get it done. Don't love the OC uh, coming from Seattle last year. Waldron there. Uh, but that's OK. We'll take some good with the bad. And I think just a the valuable value on Caleb. I think he's going to be it's going to be very insulated. Uh, and I, like I said, I think he's going to have enough stuff around him to come out there and just and put it down. He's, he's a special elite talent uh, that I don't think is going to fail. Maybe he won't be quite as good as we think he will be, but I don't think he's going to just fizzle out and not be any good. So I went Caleb Williams at one three. Austin, what do you got here at one four for us? Yep. So I'm going to take Marvin Harrison Jr. here at one oh four. Here's a player, guys, I, I mean, there's not a whole lot I can tell you guys that you probably don't know by now about Marvin Harrison Jr. I'll keep it short and sweet. He had consecutive seasons with 1,200 plus yards, consecutive seasons with 14 plus touchdown receptions. I mean, he did it with CJ Stroud. He did it with Kyle McCord. I, I, I would argue he's QB proof. I, th- I would argue he's also one of the greatest wide receiver prospects that we've ever seen. 87th percentile success rate versus press, 83rd percentile success rate versus man, 80th percentile success rate versus zone. So we cleared that 80th percentile literally all across the board. He's pretty good at football. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I, I may have gone Bijan in this position mm-hmm. just because I know mm-hmm. what I'm getting there. And we've had these discussions before ADP. In startups, it's real close. We got 202 to, to the 204 in favor of Bijan there. I like the situation Bijan's walking into. I like the situation Marvin Harrison's walking into as well. Everything that, you know, we're, it's coach speak, but I do believe that because of the pedigree of where the OC and DC are coming from uh, with the Falcons, uh, I, I probably would have gone Bijan in that situation. I think Bijan can be you know, that 21 to 20 point a game RB for you and get up into that elite category and the elite territory, uh, especially with uh, the quarterback play that we're going to see uh, coming out of Atlanta. But I don't think you can really go wrong with Marv there either. And you've been pretty firm in <clears throat> the Marv over Bijan camp every time we've done any anything where we mix up uh, some classes or first round picks or, you know, whatever it is. So can't argue too hard there yeah if, if i have a chance to draft marvin harrison jr i'm i'm not gonna mess around with it man i am i'm just leaving the draft with marv i'm 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 barely you're lucky if i'm listening to offers man i mean he was so dominant yeah like he's he skipped you know he opted out of the pre-draft workouts the nfl combine he opted out of everything and he was still the first wide receiver off the board um, I, you know, I think everybody knew hell if, if he could have come out a year prior, man, I bet you he would have still been a fringe top 10 overall pick in the 2023 NFL draft. I think that's how high uh, consensus really is on Marv. And, and I agree with him. Yeah. Good Jinkos. Yeah. Good. Those are jeans. Good jeans. Good Levi's. All right. So I took Bijan at one five. We kind of just talked about that and really no, no thought of Gibbs here for me here, but then you had Gibbs at the one six. So I, you know, was that a pretty easy decision? Because that was that that starting to come into the you know Puka neighbors Roma Dunze uh, category. I don't. I wasn't really thinking about a quarterback there. I don't know. Were you thinking about anything different at one six? Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreoncom slash Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel, or hit your boys with the five dollar holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews. And also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. 
I ended up going Jameer Gibbs at 106. You know, Puka was probably the next player to come to mind for me personally. Uh, it, it was, and not to spoil anything, or actually, I'll just shut up. I'm not, I'm not going to yap about any of the other players. But uh, as far as quarterbacks go, no, man. Um, I, I guess Jaden Daniels would have been the first quarterback to come to mind, but I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to leave this situation right here. I, I wanted to lock in Jameer Gibbs. I, I think, I mean, Gibbs was RB three, not not an RB three, the RB three or better in forty percent of games as a rookie. Yeah, uh, I I think, and that was in a you know, I would argue kind of a, a limited role, right? Like he, he wasn't early on, start, sure. fully unleashed, right? So. Uh, I, yeah, I really thought 29, 26, 21. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we saw enough from Jameer Gibbs and uh, I'm, I'm just pulling trigger here, man. I'm, I'm happy to walk away with Jameer Gibbs. I, I feel that confident. I think that she, I think that the Detroit Lions aren't going anywhere, man. I no. think they're going to be a very solid roster for honestly the foreseeable future. Yeah. When you when you build like the Lions have have built that roster, that's how you build for sustainability long term. Yep through yep. the trenches, through that offensive line, and then you get a, a serviceable to good quarterback, and then you have one of the best rece- you know, one of the best receivers in the league, and then you get Gibbs and Monty. Um, you know, I, I think it's I think it's a great one two punch. I think Gibbs I think they should keep Gibbs limited a little bit to start this season as well. Um, and then, you know, just kind of bigger roll out right, roll out the the role more and more and do a bunch of different things with him because he, he doesn't need a whole lot to have a big effect on a game. But then down the stretch in games where you need to maybe expand that role. So one six Gibbs. All right. Uh, so to start the first six picks, we had uh, one, two, three, four class of 23 players and two class of 24 players. All right. Let's roll through the next six. We got Puka at one seven. That was my pick. Who'd you take at one eight, Austin? Uh, Malik Neighbors at one oh eight. All right, then I went Roma Dunze, 1-9. Who'd you go at 110? Sam Laporta. I went Dalton Kincaid at 11. And then what was the last pick of the round? And then Jaden Daniels was the 112. Yeah. All right, so I took Puka there. I felt like that was a pretty easy pick. I'm taking Puka over Neighbors, taking Puka over Dunze, taking Puka over um, any of the quarterbacks left. So I thought that was a pretty easy pick. I mean, to come out and do what what puka did is it was very impressive uh matthew stafford is at least locked in for another year or two we'll see i like where the rams are at. i like what the rams are doing so that was a pretty easy one uh no real thought of a quarterback just yet so then you took malik neighbors like you said at, at 108 austin that was you know I, you you love neighbors so that seemed like a pretty big layup there for you as well yeah honestly whoever you didn't take between those two wide receivers, I was going to take with the next pick, Casey. Right. Um, I have, I have neighbors and I have Puka neck and neck. Uh, Puka is my wide receiver eight in dynasty neighbors is wide receiver nine. And uh, you know, he, yes, Malik neighbors is three years younger, but you know what Puka did? Uh, he just had the greatest rookie season of all time. Yeah. And that matters most. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I'm taking Puka here. I'm with you, man. So yeah, I, I mean, I like so, so far, like just, just the magnitude of these last two classes is just so fun, right? You can't really go terribly wrong here. You get some elite quarterbacks, some elite running backs, you know, some elite wide receivers that we hope are going to turn into. We're not 100% sure yet. We'll get into the second round. There'll be a bunch of guys that we've already at least seen play. So I took Roman Dunze there at 1-9. And, you know, I, I did start thinking about, hey, maybe it's time to look to, to Drake May or or look at Jaden Daniels there. I, I like May a little bit more than Daniels, but I get it. Um, but at the end of the day, I just I went with my guy, Roma Dunze. Now look, it might it might be a year before you start seeing, you know, maybe Keenan's got to leave or or whatever. But th- I feel very confident. Just like I talked about with Caleb there, like maybe Rome won't be as good as I think he is and be the alpha just number one dog. But I feel like he's going to be at least a good wide receiver in the league either way. So I, I, I just felt like, Hey, instead of taking the proposition on the quarterback, which it's super flex. So I understand it. Uh, but I, I went Roma Dunze there. So Austin, how about the pick at one ten? still going? No um, quarterback. I think this is when people are probably going to start going, why'd you guys take the quarterback here? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's tight end premium at 1.5. And I was, I was kind of, I was kind of smelling what you were laying down there. So, 
Tell us about yep. Laporta at 110. Yeah, Sam Laporta right here at the 110. Man, this is a player who, if I have a chance to draft him, I mean, I'm 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 going to plug him into my lineup and hopefully, you know, enjoy great success with him really for the next five plus seasons. I mean, I mean, it could be significantly longer than that. But man, I, I look at the NFL as really like a window of like two years is kind of how I like to play Dynasty, right? Because so much changes, man. And like, mm. you know, me coming from a Colts fan. Andrew Luck is a perfect example, man. Like sometimes you just don't know what is going to happen. You you just you don't know, man. So oh, so I don't much change. That so a, much change. That's such an outlier, man. That that what a crazy situation. Sorry to interrupt. I, right, right, right. No, I mean, Jason, you're not wrong. It is an outlier. I'm just saying, man. There are so many things that you just simply cannot predict that happen every year. And like that was, yes, that was a very unique situation. But I'm just saying, man. I w- I always like to play Dynasty with that mindset of every two seasons, um, and, and then. Um, really go on from there but sam laporta man I, I think he has half a decade of of high production in him i mean you want to talk about his rookie campaign he ranked first all time in receptions second all time in receiving touchdowns and fourth all time in receiving yards that is for tight end rookie season okay so i would argue i know i just said that puka had the goat wide receiver rookie season i would argue that Sam Laporta also did it for tight ends. I think he's in that conversation. Whereas I think Puka candidly did it. I think Sam Laporta, it's it's more debatable, but I think he's right in that conversation. I mean, he was tight end three in points per game. Uh, tight end five or better in eight out of 17 games. So that's 47%. I mean, hey man, if, if you're plugging in a rookie tight end and he is the tight end five or better in, in basically half the games, <laughs> that's everything that you pray for and more, you know, I just, yeah. I'm all in on Sam Laporta and I think his ADP and redraft might be a little too rich for me, but this is dynasty Casey. So yeah. man, if I'm going to pray, it's going to be for some way crazier than that, but <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Laporta's not my tight end one as some people have him, but I, but I get taking him there and, and long-term and, and betting on the lions long-term and whether he's second or third in the pecking order. And, but you know, I think the touchdowns will be there. He's a good dual threat player, probably a little different than the guy I took, but I took Dalton Kincaid at the 11. I did. I did skip over May and Daniels for at least one more pick here. Casey, um, how close, how close are these tight ends for you? Uh, well, they're real. They're really close. I, I would probably have McBride as my tight end one right now. Um, mm-hmm. And then Laporta and Kincaid are, are real close. And the reason, you know, I can went with Kincaid over the quarterbacks is just when we see you know, volume in tight end premium, uh, we can see these tight ends put up WR1 numbers. And we've, we've, we've talked about this multiple times on the podcast. There's five or six tight ends out there who put up uh, WR1 numbers, uh, especially when they get the volume. And Kincaid is just really setting up in a spot here where the volume is going to be, I think... He's getting all of Diggs' targets. I mean, right. That's not the really way that it really works. And we're going to see a, a completely different form of offense uh, that's going to go on over here. Th- I'm kind of thinking like the Patrick Mahomes era after the Tyree kill kind really of opened left the offense up. where the, the offense is, is a little different. And maybe you're a little bit more of a point guard out there doing some stuff. But Dalton Kincaid, I think, certainly is going to vacuum up a decent amount of targets there and is probably their best receiving threat at the moment. We'll see if Keon can get there. But the way this offense is going to break down between Cook and Kincaid, I feel like that's going to be, you know, a lot of how this offense will see how Shakir and Curtis also operate inside this framework. But we just saw us take all these wide receivers beforehand, and they're all great wide receivers, or, or we at least expect them to. I saw Kincaid have a really good back half of the uh, of his rookie season get better. Now they do have Knox on there, so you could argue about that, but. I, Kincaid is is the pass catching threat uh, in this offense, and when when there's volume and tight end premium, like I said, they can put up the WR one numbers, and that made me take uh, Kincaid there as the next guy off the board. So yeah, 90, 91 targets, uh, and you can see what Dawson Knox did to his snap percentage here. You know, I was highlighting that earlier. Go over to the YouTube channel, hit us with a subscribe if you're looking for some graphics and 
uh, different different rookie pages and whatnot. Uh, definitely go check out the YouTube page if you're just listening on the podcast. But you know you can see a lot of yellow numbers, especially towards the end of the season. But still getting a ton of volume, only playing like half the snap. So imagine if the snap count goes up. You know, well, also just also imagine if you're running maybe and when some, he gets all those digs targets. If you're running bigger sets, or you're putting him in the slot, or you're you know you're running you know twelve maybe a little more. Uh, with Got Knox to. and him on the same field at the same time, uh, with Shakir maybe off the field and Samuel and and Keon on the field, you know, doing some different things. I expect a different offense, and and I I, I didn't mind where the offense went at the end of the year after they switched coordinators uh, over to Brady. I just went with Kincaid here because I think the volume is going to be good. You get the extra half point per reception. If you're not keen on that, any league that you have tight end premium. Go look at the wide receivers and tight ends and, and put them together and look at that scoring. And, and I think, you know, it'll turn out some of you people out there who are tight end haters because, uh, you know, it really should be a bit more of an obvious thing. I would have probably leaned Kincaid in, in this scenario, maybe over Laporta, but I can't argue with it at all. A lot of people are probably in your in your corner there, Austin. So hit us up with the 12th and final player of this round here. Yeah, absolutely. I have Jaden Daniels here. I got a fact for you, Casey. In the Super Bowl era, there have been seven rookie quarterbacks with 80-plus rushing attempts. All seven of those rookie quarterbacks finished top 12 in points per game. Uh, I'll I'll read you the list real quick. We have Kyler Murray, who, by the way, was at 18.6 points per game. That was the lowest on this list. So Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Russell Wilson, Mm. Robert Griffin III, Cam Newton and Vince Young and Cam Newton ranked first in points per game among, you know, in that list at 24.8. This is a pretty damn good list. I'm not saying, you know, because I pulled this statistic, I'm not saying that Jaden Daniels will finish as a top 12 quarter quarterback, but I'm just saying, you know, history is looking pretty appealing right now. Yeah. You know, here's a player who had over 1100 rushing yards last season. Obviously Jaden Daniels, Go second overall, wins the Heisman with LSU. He had 10 rushing touchdowns, threw for 40 touchdowns this year, four interceptions. He is also the only player in FBS history with 12,000 plus passing yards and 3,000 plus rushing yards. So I'm very much in on Jaden Daniels for, yeah. fa- for fantasy purposes. Yeah, I, th- I think his legs are going to be very dangerous. I think that'll help his fantasy floor out and, and Kingsbury had Kyler being productive as a fantasy player and his first couple seasons did seem to get stale there, but that's for down the line. But yeah, Which call of duty. Is it when that Jaden Daniels uh, rounding out the uh, first round here? Let's jump into the uh, second round real quick. I went Drake May at, at the two twelve, and, and real quick on then Then we'll re- rattle off the next five. I got May in front of Daniels and and we I've had it that way all all off season. I know some people probably don't like it, but look, you got a 25 year old and a 21 year old. I like all the traits. And when when who's 25? I think Jane Daniels is 25. I got three. 24. But we'll we'll I'll have to I, double check that. He's not 25. I was I was exaggerating. I thought <laughs> he was. I, I thought he was 24. But you have a guy who's basically a fifth year player. And a guy who played three seasons, essentially. And when he was surrounded with a little bit better of a cast, put up better numbers. Jaden Daniels was surrounded by a really good cast in Arizona State at times and and really didn't quite thrive and and do quite what he wanted to. And look, I don't hold that against guys a ton. I did use it maybe a little bit as of uh, of a a tiebreaker in this situation. Uh, I think Jaden Daniels is going to be just fine. I, I just. I, I like May a little bit more, and I think May has the, some rushing upside too. Uh, but oh, I, absolutely! I, I like the the young development of May, and a little bit more than the fifth year senior at LSU with a really good supporting cast putting up crazy numbers. Which, hey, you know, I I was very pro. I'm not. You're never going to hear me argue about Joe Burrow with a good supporting cast. Like, there's been there are some numbers to support that. Hey, wh- which one was it? And, and some quarterbacks was it are, two of the best wide receivers proved, in the league or was it Joe Burrow? Right. Proved to be that it, it, it was the, the, the system surrounding them. Well, it was all of it. And that's why he broke the record and threw right, 60 right. touchdowns and just crushed the clips. But, but what I'm saying is, is like there's, you know, it's always hard to tell which which way it goes. I mean, in that in Burrow's particular case, everybody who was using that in the net in the way that I was using it currently with Daniels a little bit was wrong. And look, Daniels 
was outstanding. Uh, I thought May was really good the year before. So uh, just the situations kind of changed a little bit for both guys in, in different ways. And so I went Drake May at 212. Austin went Bowers at 211. I took A Chain at 210, or uh, sorry, 23. Um, took Rashi Rice at uh, 24. And uh, 2 5, Tank Dell, 2 6, uh, Zay Flowers. So you went Brock Bowers there over A Chan and Rice and JSN and Brooks. Felt pretty good about that? Yeah, I felt confident in that, man. Uh, 13th overall selection by the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, I don't know what the Raiders are doing, man. I, I think that they nailed this pick, but the fact that they spent a second round draft pick on Michael Mayer, another tight end, and then just one year later, you know, spend a first round pick on tight end. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, but I think that they nailed this pick. I'm, I'm not going to lie, man. Uh, I don't, I, you know, aside from who Devonte Adams and, and shout out to Jacoby Myers. Cause he's actually a really, really solid wide receiver too. Mm. I like Jacoby Myers a lot, but you know, who knows how long those guys are going to be on that roster, man? Who knows? I think Oak, uh, Oakland, I think Las Vegas is going to be a team that uh, we see a lot of turnover. Um, I like that they kept Pierce. I thought, you know, them retaining their their head coach was massive. I, I'm a big fan of him. Um, but I, I think Brock Bowers is going to be deployed. And Casey, we have talked about this before, but I think he's going to de- be deployed as more than just a tight end, but, you know, a weapon as well. I mean, maybe we see jet sweeps, you know, Maybe we see him blocking a little more than we want to see. I just I think he's he can have a very, very high snap percentage. I think he's going to always be out there on the field. He's you know, he was prioritized in the NFL draft, and I believe that he will be prioritized on the field as well. I mean, I've yapped so many times on the pod about how incredible his collegiate production was. Uh, I just I, I think he is in that conversation for the all time greatest tight end prospect. And I always say keyword is prospect because yeah. who the hell knows how they actually pan out, man. There are a lot of times where players bust, but I am confident that Rock Bowers will have a lot of success in the NFL. You know, the, the, the only thing with Bowers that I worry about at all is just having the right OC to use him properly. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that's, that's really the only only issue I see with Bowers and I'm, I'm not a thousand percent locked in on the Raiders are going to be uh, that team to use him properly but we shall see but it it just it knocks Bowers down maybe a hair but I, I don't mind taking Bowers there uh, at all uh, in tight end premium so the next pick I want a chain I just a chain swung for the fences there thought about Tank Dell thought about Flowers thought about JSN um, but just really went for it You you had mentioned some you know when you got when you have a guy like um, like a Chan and a guy like Anthony Richardson, you you, you start measuring things at uh, points per snap, and a Chan a Chan was was very high uh, in that regard, and it's going to be a lot of fun to see how the Dolphins use those that backfield kind of moving forward. So I I, I took a, a a big swing here uh, at the two three, and I thought that was. Uh, was was kind of a lot of fun. You you on the next pick took Rashi Rice over over Dell Flowers JSN. What were the thoughts there? Yeah, he's better, man. He's a better wide receiver. Ooh. He was better last season. He's going to continue to be better. I know this is a very unique case, of course, with the off the field issues. Uh, we'll we'll see how that pans out. But Casey, we we you know it's dynasty, man. I'm not worried in dynasty in redraft. It's a very different story. Yeah. Um, I just I think Rashi Rice is one of the greatest by lows all mm, the yes. entire offseason, man. I'm just I I don't know how you are not at least shooting a text to the other GMs like like Did let me buy yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Send them send them all of the threads, all the articles, some of the worst news you could possibly find and use that as fuel to go buy Rashi Rice. That's that's how you play, man. That's how you do it, man. You got to be toxic out here. Yeah. You know? Love the love the buy low on toxic. Love the buy low on rice. Got to be sending those offers. Uh, I went Tank Dell next. I, it was a coin flip between Flowers and JSN here for me, uh, but just the the amount of points that Tank Dell was able to put up in his amount of time on the field and the way that that connection looked. I'm not worried. Like you said, it's dynasty. Not terribly worried about digs for a year or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that dynamic trio of Stroud. Dell and Nico is going to be a lot of fun. You know, at one point he was like averaging 17.8 points per game. And when healthy, this is a sick 
sick uh, stretch. Right. And and while he may not be, quote unquote, the number one, I, I think this is an offense that doesn't really matter. Both of those guys can put up wide receiver num- one numbers. Now, this this year, it might be a little bit more of peaks and valleys, but I'm going to live with that, uh, knowing that that CJ Stroud and the Texans are an arrow pointing straight up. So I went Dell there. Uh, you went flowers on the next pick. Uh, no JSN, Brooks, Worthy. You like flowers over the most of the rest of the 24 class yeah i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty in on zay flowers i've i've gotten much more bullish it's probably your fault casey because <laughs> you you know he he's i think he's definitely one of your guys you know i know that you're bullish on him and listening to you know whether it's a lot of matt Harmon content or just listening to you he turned down six hundred thousand so- dollars or something i mean come on <laughs> are you jason are you talking about the uh, nil deal of course Right. Yeah. yeah. Been no, talking I, about I, that for I, two years. For years. <laughs> yeah, man. He's uh, I think Zay Flowers could be a league winner, Casey, like you said, uh, just 23 years old. Uh, Finished you know, so strong, for, too. And into the yeah, playoffs he, and, and it, bonehead fumble, but whatever. Yeah, man. And, and that's the thing, Jason, like there was more meat left on the bone. If you actually sat down and watched those games rather than just look at the box score, you knew that you know, not only was he becoming one of the focal points of that offense, but he was the number one weapon, of course, when Mark Andrews was was out. You look at the box score, it's a little misleading. It should be better. Yeah. It should have been better. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. And I he think, still had a good season. Yeah, a really he still good. had a he had a solid rookie season. Obviously, there was some Andrews in and out, but like, man, I I, I love the Zay Flowers. Uh, so I don't I don't hate that at all. So I want JSN. I'm I'm look, it's Dynasty. I I have patience. I'm not ready to quit this guy. Honestly, I probably could have you know, I'm okay with, with taking him in front of all the all those last uh, 23 receivers we just talked about. Still, like I, I still think he's has the, a ridiculous ceiling, and I love, you know, eventually what could be in Seattle. And I like the new offensive scheme and the offensive coordinator. Uh, we're going to see JSN hopefully out wide a little bit more, bouncing in between the slot and out wide. But his his fantasy points uh, per snap out wide, I think we're we're very very productive. I don't have that number in front of me, but I was just on Memphis's podcast. So that number's floating around here somewhere. Um, I'll try to find it while, while we talk. But let's go rapid fire through the next six guys. So you were up next, Austin. You took Jonathan Brooks. I took Xavier Worthy. You took Brian Thomas. I took Lad McConkey. And then to end this thing, uh, Jordan Addison. So you've, uh, you, you went Brooks over some of these uh, 24 wide receivers. He's really climbing the charts for you there. Yeah, I'm I'm in on Brooks, man. Um, I think you know we've talked about this. I think that Brooks is someone who you want to buy a few weeks into the season. I think he's going to come off a little disappointing early on, and that's when you want to buy him. Here's what, what I'll, and I'll be quick with Jonathan Brooks. It's the size that I love, the six foot two sixteen. I really, really found the draft capital appealing. Obviously, the second round draft capital, the first running back off the board. And the big thing, Casey, maybe the biggest, it's Dave Canales, right? Ooh. The former offensive coordinator with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is now the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. You just, you look at Rashad White, who is another back who I don't care that he's relatively inefficient. He's productive, right? And he's durable. And I think that's what Jonathan Brooks will be in the future. I mean, Rashad White had 322 touches last year, 70 targets, uh, the RB4 overall. I'm not saying that Jonathan Brooks will do that this year or uh, even like necessarily in the future. I'm just saying like we saw it happen with Rashad White. I do believe that there is a world that exists where Jonathan Brooks can put up close to those statistics. Um, right. I, he's, I'm in on Jonathan Brooks. Man. I'm, yeah. I'm very much in on Jonathan Brooks. Yeah, I mean, it might it might take a minute, but I, I too am in there, and I think we've he's probably been the biggest riser all all off season for mm-hmm. a lot of people. JSN fantasy points per route run went outside point six one. That was tied for eighth Doug, overall minimum one hundred routes. Dug deep in that legal, so <laughs> shuffling papers over here. Yeah. All right, put it into the computer. Um, so I went Xavier Worthy next. Look, uh, we've one fucking catch from Patrick Mahomes uh, in camp, and the everybody's pants were off. So <laughs> you know, and that, and I've talked about it a million times, and now everybody in the world wants to talk about it. That vertical game is coming back for Kansas City with Hollywood and and Worthy. He's really going to um, open up the offense. And now, now literally everybody's talking about it. Like, what, where were you guys three months ago? But I took Worthy there. He's been my favorite non top elite wide receiver out of these guys uh, but 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 it's really kind of a tier 
Um, and then you went Brian Thomas there. I know he's your boy. And, and in that tier with, with the uh, non-elites of the 24 class. So give us a little Brian Thomas and then we'll uh, wrap it up. Yep, I love BTJ, man. Led the nation, 17 touchdown receptions this past season. And I'm going to give you one, the epitome of, of cherry picking right here, but hear me out. 23 wide receivers. There have been 23 first round wide receivers that were early declares and had a 2.75 yards per team pass attempt during their declare season. I know that's a lot to take in. 70% of those wide receivers hit 14 plus points per game. 52% hit 16 points per game and 39% hit 18 plus points per game. Really, really good numbers right there. Yes, it's it's a very, obviously very unique stat, but that's very good company for Brian Thomas Jr. to be in. Uh, I think if I could take away one thing from that stat, it shows you that the upside for Brian Thomas Jr., it's very real. Mm, yeah. No, it's, it's certainly there. I think I think he fits better in that Calvin Ridley role than Calvin Ridley did. Um, and yep. not taking anything away from Calvin Ridley. I think they should have used Calvin a little differently, but I think Brian Thomas fits that great. So the last two picks here, Lad McConkey and Jordan Addison, I kind of viewed them as, as similar, similar kind of players a little bit. They can do some similar things. They can take the top off. They can operate uh, in space and, and r- run routes very, very efficiently. But the tiebreaker for me was just Justin Herbert rather than unknown over there in Minnesota, uh, whether it's JJ or Sam. And I think Ad- Addison's going to be have a good, productive career. A lot of hate on Addison right now. But Ladd has a chance to come in there and solidify potentially being Herbert's favorite target and has Herbert, whereas Addison you know, doesn't quite have that luxury. And Justin Jefferson's pretty much always going to be the hog, which is okay because we, we talked about it in, in the process of 23 that, that Addison is certainly a Robin, not a Batman. And, and that's OK. I think he can fit really well in that role. Uh, but that's what was the tiebreaker for me. And then you went Jordan Addison on the last pick there in this draft. And, you know, we leave it out guys like, you know, Penix's and the Knicks, uh, McCarthy, Keons, J.J. McCarthy. So wrap us up. Take us take us out, uh, Austin. Yeah, man. Uh, Jordan Addison, just a player that needs to get his head on straight first and foremost. That's uh, that's honestly the biggest concern I have with him. Uh, that's really the only concern that I have with Jordan Addison. It's, it's the off, it, it's the yeah, off the field antics, man, because uh, every everything that we saw with Addison this past season was, you know, it was phenomenal, man. I, I don't really think it's being talked about enough. Uh, Jordan Addison just, drink. Uh, right? I know that he's get you know, in terms of QB production, I expect that to take a dip. Obviously, whether it's Darnold, whether it's J.J. McCarthy, and it looks like right now, as far as week one goes, I do believe that it will be Sam Darnold. Hell, it could be the first oh, four weeks. It, it, it could be the first six weeks. It could be more. But I'll tell you what, week Jesus. one, I, yeah, I feel very confident that it is Sam Darnold. I feel good about this pick, though. This is, you know, what, yeah. pick 24? Oh, dude. So. That, I, I think that's Safe really and solid. I, I think that's the, the big takeaway from he's got talent. He can play. What this, what this, what these last two classes have provided us of, of just really oh, yeah. good, solid injection of, of good players, and you know, like I said, we there's still five or six players on here that I that I really you know wanted to squeeze into the second round, but couldn't. Trey Benson, Knicks, Penix, uh, Sinnott, Leggett. Did, did you say? Did you say Jaden Reed too, man? Did you say uh, him too? Jaden Reed? No, we didn't. We didn't hit Jaden Reed yet, but yeah, yeah. I mean. He's not he, far off. He's not far off at all. I mean, some people Someone's would take Jaden Reed. It. Somebody would take Jaden Reed over Addison for sure. Um, and you know, like I looked at Jaden Reed as basically like I would I would trade pretty much all those the the worthy lad BT range of guys. I would trade mm-hmm. Jordan Addison or uh, Jaden Reed out for for any of those guys. It's kind of been my position. So he's right there though. So I think that's a that's a good call, Benson. Was another one who's who's right there. So, a uh, lot lot of good young players coming into the league, and and hopefully next year we'll see even a bigger influx of the at the running back position. So, all right, let's get out of here. We're gonna do a little buy sell hold. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment below if you're listening on the podcast. Five star review. Just tap it. If you're if you want some more action from us, we got a Patreon. You get at least three extra episodes over there. That comes with the Discord as well. There's a free Discord that you can go check out. 
Um, there's an ADP over there. We're doing mock drafts, uh, roster reviews, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Keep it locked and loaded. Austin, I would say go check him out, but I don't think you're going to be putting out any episodes uh, anytime soon. Seems like you got a long uh, summer vacay coming up, bud. Yeah, we're uh, we're going to Positano, Sorrento, Rome, and Amalfi. My girlfriend and I will be there for 17 days, so uh, this might be the last time you ever see me, man. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Austin I'm, for a minute. Nothing happened. He's just on vacation. We didn't we didn't get rid dude, of him. Hit that buffalo mozzarella, bro. Oh my <laughs> god, bring home a buffalo from the southern Italy part of De Campania, man, and, and we'll just we'll just raise them like our own, <laughs> and we'll get that buffalo mozzarella. It's like top three best thing i've ever eaten like if i'm on death row if i get a three course meal <laughs> buffalo mozzarella is one of them four sure mm. All right. <laughs> strong endorsement with a little prosciutto oh my god and it's not it's not the same you go to rome not the same it's not the same as in southern italy i don't know just a little culture there for you different get grass. out there kids different grass maybe i don't, I don't know. know different buffalo i don't know so austin we'll, we'll we will catch you Right before the season, we'll, we'll do something, uh, get you back in the swing of things. But enjoy it, and we'll, we'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace.